aired Obama's leftover Muslim staffer after finding out what he's been doing for months. John Kelly made his way to the White House and dropped the hammer on his first day. People hit by this hammer no longer have jobs. That ranges from Anthony Scaramucci, fired, to Obama's leftover Muslim staffer, George Saleem, who resigned right before Kelly arrived. Kelly is a retired Marine general, served three tours in Iraq, was recently serving as the Secretary of Homeland Security. Kelly's new responsibility is the White House Chief of Staff. Just as Kelly was making his way in, George Saleem was making his way out. Saleem was in charge of former President Obama's program that attempted to redirect Islamic immigrants away from turning to jihad lifestyles that often lead to violence and mass destruction. That program was listed as countering violent extremism and identified by initials CVE started off as a new way to prevent terrorism, but eventually became a huge failure. The concept was to attempt redirection of Muslims to better lifestyles but to encourage Muslims to report when they notice someone is turning toward evil. The problem with the program was that government kept spending money on it, but it failed to yield results. There was little return on the investment because the Muslim people involved were not reporting the people who turned to jihad. This was evident as attacks continued and no one had any intelligence on the attackers. Had the program been a success? then perhaps the attacks wouldn't have happened. Those attacks include the brutal shooting at Pulse nightclub in Florida and pressure cooker bombings in New Jersey. Any amount of helping information could have prevented either of those attacks, but the Muslim people who were involved simply didn't tell authorities about anything. Of course, it could be that no one knew, but there's usually signs such as weird behaviors and other indicators that allow people to notice that something is off or something isn't right with someone. Salim probably knew the CVE program wasn't serving its purpose and figured he was on his way out. Perhaps he left with dignity as he resigned. Would he have been fired? It's hard to say. Kelly's hard-nosed military experience could have sniffed something strange and fired Salim and cut off all the Muslim contacts, if any, that were left. Kelly may have wanted a clean slate with his outlook on combating terrorism. If any counter-terrorism program had to go, then CVE may have been the first to go. George Saleem headed the now-defunct CVE program which tried to offer federal support and legal autonomy to Islamic political groups if they redirected Islamic immigrants and youths away from Islamic militancy and jihad. His resignation spotlighted Kelly's decision to replace Obama's failed policy with more direct government involvement in Islamic communities. Kelly may use his new White House job to make his anti-jihad strategy a government-wide policy. During his six months at the agency, Kelly apparently discarded Obama's CVE plan and has shifted DHS attention and funds away from Islamic groups which wanted to prevent FBI anti-jihad investigations in their Islamic communities. Instead, the funds and attention will go to police groups that are directly assimilating Islamic communities into normal American civic society without relying on the Islamic political groups, such as the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Kelly's approach does not believe in delivering money to Muslim groups or people, if that's what CVE did, who are not properly cooperating or doing their part. There wasn't a return on investment, or so it seems. Kelly abandoned CVE when stepped into his role at DHS. He thought it was better to provide police forces with the funding and have them work directly with Islamic communities and help with assimilation. It seems like the shift went from a near-secretive relationship with CVE to a more public and involved relationship with communities and police forces. If police and people, of any culture, work together to build community relations, then people typically respect each other more. Communities who work together, thrive together. Muslim people sometimes struggle to thrive in America because they're not used to the different lifestyle and way of life that Americans endure. A perfect example is that women in America are not forced to dress a certain way or do things one way or the other. American women have all the freedom in the country to do whatever they want and dress however they like. Women in the Islamic religion are forced to dress a particular way, which is extremely oppressive to them. Meanwhile, Muslim men can do as they wish and dress as they like. One must ask, how is that fair? Why does a Muslim woman at the beach, in 95-degree heat, 
have to wear a black garment that covers her from head to toe, while the Muslim man is wearing a comfortable pair of swim shorts and cool sunglasses. It doesn't make sense and it's definitely oppressive to Muslim women. Kelly looks to be a fine addition to Trump's administration. His version of combating terrorism by building communities might have a longer-lasting effect and certainly be more appealing to all involved. There's no reason people can't work together and make America great again. Thank you for watching. What do you think about this?